Today's video is gonna be a bit different from the videos I usually do. I usually do uh, game jams uh, and things like that. Um, I was inspired by Kira TV's videos. Uh, he was doing these videos about uh, Chronicles of Valeria. And if you don't know what uh, Chronicles of Valeria or Kingdoms of Valeria is, uh, just go watch Kira TV. I'll uh, link the playlist in the description. So basically, they raised eight million dollars on uh, rendered footage. They didn't have any gameplay, as it seemed. After that, they showcased some parkour thing. Then they showcased something that looked like a combination of RuneScape and Minecraft. And now they are trying to deliver um, Unity Asset Toss called Kingdoms of Illyria. And this video is going to be me trying to recreate the alpha of Kingdoms of Illyria. Uh, I have never made a 3D game. I'm a total noob. I have made three 2D games for the game jams. Uh, two of them in three days, one in three hours. And uh, yeah. I get about 3 months experience in Unity and I will be trying to replicate what they did. During the process I discovered that J -J -J Jeremy Walsh was using a bunch of assets from Unity store and I think I could pinpoint which ones exactly he was using. I will share them later in this video. I gave myself 5 days and uh, I was able to do it. I shouldn't be able to do it because I have no experience and that I think says something about their game. My game is called Lies of Deliria. Uh, I didn't have time to polish, I didn't want to polish it, uh, I didn't want to focus on colors, everything looking perfect, but if I added a few more days, I think I would, I could have made it look uh, exactly like their game. Currently I just didn't want to spend the time doing these unnecessary tasks. Uh, the video is going to be in two parts, uh, first one being uh, the game showcase, I will go through the game uh, just like uh, Soulbound Studios did and uh, tell you step by step uh, what functionalities we have. My won't be 40 minutes, I'll just go through all the functionalities without talking about backend stuff and other bunch of imaginary things that happens in someone's head. Uh, and the second part is going to be devlog, I will show you what assets did I use, how I made it and show you a quick run through of the development process of this project. And I hope you enjoy it, so now let's skip to the showcase part. So this is the main menu, uh, I've created a logo uh, which has a nice graphic in the background. Also you have the main menu buttons. Uh, which are enter server, exit from server. Basically what they do is um, start the game and uh, exit the game just like it was for their project. Also I did an FPS mode, I will show it to you later. And the uh, most important thing, build version 8 million. Uh, and press proceed to proceed, this has no purpose, it's just to make you feel that more is happening in the background than there actually is or in the back end. So the game starts and you can see um, everything is happening. There's a clock, time is going, shadows are moving, this is our main character. But you can see that there's some music playing. Uh, this music is probably composed by someone really good, but basically I googled some royalty food tower music. I know the Soulbound Studios felt the need to showcase that they have this volume control. I also have volume control. Uh, we have this meter that indicates how hot it is, but just like Soulbound Studios meter, this does nothing. The camera can rotate, the camera can zoom in and zoom out, just like theirs did. We can speed up the time, we can slow the time down, and we can pause the game. And I also have a day and night cycle. During the afternoon and the night, fog moves in closer and uh, the lights turn on for the houses. This is the tooltip that is displayed for all the characters. It shows health, stamina and uh, the name. Uh, this is uh, the main character's uh, card. Currently his action is chilling with some Skrilla and recent activity is a huge scam or a gigantic incompetence. Uh, the equipment is 8 million USD, swag and uh, 3 of the Kasparians. I'll show you what the Kasparian is later. Uh, attributes Strength 3, Stamina 99, Chill 9999, reason to do this 8 mil, focus 5 years, persuasion somehow a lot, and known skills, disappearing and mining. And uh, this is the Kasparian. Uh, there's a backend problem, that's why 3 of them showed up in the character sheet. Also you have tooltips for other characters. And this is the character sheet of the Wellwolf. Uh, citizenship Well, currently ready to pop. Once these werewolves pop, uh, it's, it's going to be hell out there. Uh, recent activities bit off more than he could chew. 
uh, equipment, fangs and some other things. Uh, he has 100 strength, uh, 0 stamina, uh, he has no chill, reason to do this none, focus 1 second and persuasion none, known skills eating. Uh, yeah. So so that's the well wolf. Uh, this is the well dweller, this is shorty too, hobbit style thing. This is shorty, also a hobbit style thing. Uh, this is the friend of the wise. This is the statue of Kasparian the wise. It's guarded by Velociraptor. I, I just added mining, uh, you can mine and it spawns rocks uh, just like they had. I just didn't add uh, tree chopping and berry gathering because it's basically the same thing, you just change the animation and the uh, thing that spawns. And now let's check out the first person mode. So everything is basically the same, but you play as a different character. That's why the Casparian will be uh, visible here. So yeah, you can check out uh, these characters up close in here. These are my two characters, which are basically the same asset that Jeremy was using. Uh, these are Hobbit style things. You can check them out too up close. see the Kasparian himself, he's just chilling. Uh, you can jump to Velociraptors too. Uh, the Kasparian is actually a Velociraptor farmer uh, and this land is inhabited by din dinosaurs as well as regular animals. We can also check out uh, the big statue of the wise Kasparian, it looks like this from the first person perspective. And we can also go to forest and check out how the forest looks here. But this is already a start for Chronicles of Illyria. This video might even be useful for Jeremy to, to understand how to implement first person mode. Now how I made the project. Uh, first off I started with implementing the real time strategy camera. Uh, there were multiple assets on uh, Unity Asset Store like this. I chose uh, one of the first ones I got. Basically, it covered the functionality that they showcased. Uh, rotating camera, zooming in and out and so on. After that, I proceeded to make a long list of tasks in uh, Trello.com. Uh, this this to help me better organize the project and, uh, and feel rewarded for the progress. After that, I proceeded to make uh, tile sets. I added a couple of trees. I made some uh, little hills, little bumps, uh, little crevices. I added a bunch of roads. I, I added dust. I uh, adjusted camera a bit more. And after that, I proceeded to search for some houses. What I wanted to have is uh, three houses uh, and a well because they had well and they had like three houses. So I searched for village houses, and right away I found the package that contains a well and three houses. So I used that. I found this animal pack and I think this is the animal pack that they are using in their project. It costs five dollars and it has animations in it. As we saw they only used moving animations and uh, I think these animals are rigged too so you can make uh, new animations yourself. After that I needed some music. I googled royalty free tavern music and through these three tracks that was free together in Audacity. Also instead of animals I decided to have Velociraptors. Uh, after I imported this asset, I proceeded to make a waypoint system for this Velociraptor to move, so it moved between the waypoints. I found this uh, Uma multipurpose avatar. Uh, first, off, first off, I didn't know what that was, uh, but as I started to use it, uh, I saw that you can customize your characters, customize their clothes, and basically it's really elastic and, and free. And so I started creating the main character, I started creating the rest of the characters, and as I proceeded, I added a bunch of clothes that were in there. There was these checkered pants. Some of these clothes were exactly the same like Jeremy Walsh was using in his project. So I would, I'm ready to bet the big sum of money that they are, they are using Unity Multipurpose Avatar 2. Next I implemented the click to run for the main character. 
and also I needed the day and night cycle. I did the day and night cycle with Unity Asset. Basically what this asset does is it rotates the direction of light uh, around the scene and the shadows are cast automatically. I created the UI elements for speeding up the game. I used the clock from the day and night cycle asset. After that was done, uh, I added the fog of war, as he called it. Uh, so basically I did particle effects that make fog and put them around the city. I added a bunch of lights and also I added uh, the functionality so the lights are known only at night and I also added the functionality that uh, the fog comes in closer when it's night. After this uh, I needed the mining. I started to create mining animation myself but I failed multiple times and this was the end result that I got. So I search for free assets, I find these villager animations free, they look really good and turned out uh, they were compatible so I added uh, them and downloaded the pickaxe and uh, added the pickaxe to this uh, animation. Everything worked, everything looked fine, so I thought uh, maybe Jeremy Walsh uh, used these same animations in his game, but I checked it out and that wasn't the case, his animations looked worse than these and these are actually really good and beautiful animations. I suggest you, Jeremy, change to these ones. After the animation was done, I added some smaller rocks that would be mineable. I just didn't want to add other mining uh, resources because it would be a waste of time to replicate the functionality. Uh, after that, I created the character screens. I created the tooltips. I added content to these tooltips. I added content to these character screens and proceeded to making uh, a logo. Uh, the logo looked like uh, you already saw in the main menu. Uh, you can see how it was done here. It was pretty easy, I just added a stamp, added some graphics and added some fonts. And the last thing that I needed to do was create the uh, main menu, so I did that. Uh, in retrospect, I really enjoyed making this uh, game, making this project, uh, so thank you Soulbound Studios and thank you Jeremy Walsh. I don't know why I have two of them on my screen, something must have glitched. And uh, of course, thank you Kira TV for inspiration to do this. So as this was my first 3D game uh, and I've done a bunch of 2D games, in my opinion, everyone that has access to Google and YouTube could make this project within two weeks easily without any prior experience in programming or Unity. Yeah, so anyways, thanks for watching, follow me on Twitter, which has zero followers, join my Discord community, which has zero participants, and subscribe to my YouTube channel.